Hello my beautiful earth angels, welcome back to another reading. This is a bit of a shorter reading, I've actually already got this up uh, as a pick a crystal, pick a pile on my Instagram, but I wanted to film it to explain it better because this turned out into such a beautiful reading you guys. I started this asking the question, what is unique about you and wanting to do this reading to find and show you um, a unique or some unique qualities about yourself uh, just to make you feel good <laughs> and then it turned out even better because what this turned out into was actually spirit giving me things that are unique about you but some of them are things that you don't see as a gift so this turned out into what is your unique gift that goes unnoticed um, so these are the four piles. I'm actually going to put another photo up um, so that you can see the crystals clearer, the colours clearer. As well guys, I forgot to say that you can be drawn to any number of piles. If there's just one pile that you're drawn to, then go for that one. But if you're drawn to two or three or however many, there is no wrong number. So just follow your intuition. But we've got pile number one with... Uh, golden tiger's eye or this one's actually a bit pinky but as I said I'm gonna put another photo up in a minute so you can see the colors of the crystals better because it's a bit dark in here pile number two with amazonite pile number three with moonstone and pile number four with this orange aventurine I'm pretty sure this is or yellow aventurine I don't know so tune into the piles if these crystals were in front of you which one would you choose um, if you don't resonate with the pile um, and there was kind of a few crystals you couldn't decide between, um, then come back here and pick the other one you were drawn to. Maybe that one resonates with you more. I'm going to put the timestamps in the description below, which I always forget to say. So whichever crystal you choose, if you go down to the description, we'll have pile one, pile two, pile three, pile four with a timestamp. You click on your timestamp and it will take you straight to your reading. So I hope you enjoyed this reading today, guys. Um, I really do, because I enjoyed doing it. I enjoyed channeling these messages for you. And honestly, some of them are just so funny. So yeah, take all the time in the world that you need. And I will see you in your reading. So part number one, if you chose this golden tiger's eye crystal, then this is going to be your reading of what is your unique gift, your unique quality that goes unnoticed. So for this pile, it's really funny because the energies are actually very mixed. There's a lot of divine masculine energy in this, especially with the emperor. Um, but this doesn't matter what gender you are. You could be a woman and have a lot of divine masculine, um, which I think a lot of you could do, especially in the sense that this is talking about. So if you're a woman, you, def you embody the divine masculine qualities uh, when it comes to your business, when it comes to your goals, how you envision your future and how you kind of play out your dream world towards your future. You're gifted at being able to see tangible plans or moves or steps forward uh, on how to make your passions a business or business ideas. For a lot of you in this pile, your unique gift is that you are amazing at thinking of business ideas even if these aren't even ideas that you want to do yourself it's just like wow this would be so cool as kind of like if someone did this this would be so cool or someone needs to do this or they should make it like this like you're full of ideas you're full of inspiration um and even like when you're sat around with friends or something i get this energy of you like bouncing kind of funny business ideas together or plans or just like you know, things like that. Um, I also think that this is linked into your unique gift being the fact that you can see people through the eyes of compassion. You can see people through the eyes of love. And it's actually interesting that you have the lovers and the emperor, because I think there's a very dualness to your energy. There's a very nice balance of business mindedness tied in with kind of love, passion and what the world actually needs. Um, or what would actually be good or helpful for people. Um, your unique gift is that you are able to see untapped potential in other people. This is a main theme of your reading, the fact that you can see untapped potential in others because you have this energy of admiring other people's gifts, admiring other people's talents, and um, 
it's almost as if like if you see so like you could be the type to really appreciate art even if you're not creative but it's, a lot of you are creative <laughs> or just like you know even if you don't deem yourself to be good at art or anything like it doesn't matter you're still a creative person and you really appreciate people that are creative or art or anything that brings kind of like this love or uh, divine energy of creation um so your unique gift is that you can really 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 see untapped potential in other people this is a gift not everyone can do this it's kind of almost as if like if someone oh if someone has a really cool kind of skill or trait or talent or whatever they're doing it's almost as if you admire this in them you can get into their frame of mind and you think what would i do if i was in their position oh if i had that gift i would do this you might even be the type of friend to suggest ideas to your other friends like oh you should do this or it'd be so cool if you did this like you have a lot of good ideas and the thing is you yeah you can see untapped potential in other people and not everyone can see untapped potential in themselves so it's something that you mirror to people and makes them feel really quite good about themselves like it makes them feel really seen really appreciated and like wow like someone recognizes or like it's because you put yourself in their frame and and yeah i feel like a lot of people really appreciate this and the feedback and suggestions that you have when it comes to you know just giving people ideas or suggestions or guidance or just anything like that um but yeah there's a very fiery energy to you as well <laughs> I, I don't know it's like this passion but it could be your creativity too but there's a very yeah essentially fiery kind of just lit up energy inside of you you like looking towards the future you can imagine the future and this is a gift because you're imagining possible uh, avenues so see when there's anything like a uh, if there's anything like an uncertainty or a question or a dividing impasse this in the quantum realm splits off into different uh, vibrations of reality different dimensions of reality which i call possible outcomes so if you're at an uncertain point it's almost as if in the quantum realm, there's all these possible outcomes in the multiverse and it's like all of these are possible to go down. What you are gifted at is that <laughs> you might not even see it as this way as you're seeing possible outcomes in the multiverse, in the quantum realm. But the thing is, you see potential and what potential is, is simply them untapped, unlived possible outcomes. And so you're really good at doing this for other people. Um, I feel like this may resonate with some of you more than others, but for some of you, I feel as if you would love to have your own business. You'd love to be independently successful. You'd love to be like, you know, the emperor. You'd love to be a boss, like in charge of yourself, work for no one above you. Um, but the thing is, sometimes I feel like you see so much untapped potential in other people and you see it all the avenues they could go down and the cool things they could do because you put a lot more admiration onto other people you put a lot more of love onto other people than you do yourself sometimes so sometimes you're better at thinking of ideas for others or solutions for others because you see them through this through these eyes of admiration through these eyes of love and you sometimes can't do this for yourself so this might be something like you tell yourself like there's nothing that you're skilled at there's nothing that that, that specifically is like your calling but this is a lie because you're very creative and you're very um it yours is so universal that it really doesn't matter what you do it's just that whatever you do you can make tangible plans towards success and not everyone can do that not everyone thinks of plans or the future what ways they could go and make it realistic um and i don't really like the word realistic but you know sometimes people have really out their dreams and that is amazing no dream is ever too big but when it comes to grounding the energy to find the seeds to take the the kind of steps towards it in their re actual reality they can get stuck Whereas for you, you have like these big, amazing dreams or these big goals, or these plans, or you see them for other people, but you actually see the tangible steps on how to get there too. You're like, oh, you could do this. You just need to do this. You know what I mean? So your, your kind of uh, gift and stuff is really beautiful. And yeah, it's just a little side note for some of you not to put yourself down that, that sometimes you see all this amazingness in other people. I don't want 
this to make you feel like there's nothing amazing about you. It's just simply that you look through different eyes when you look at other people to when you look at yourself. So there's many different ways you could go down and maybe sometimes you even feel overwhelmed by this because there's not one specific thing that maybe you're set on doing or maybe you want to do and that's literally for a few people. I feel like some of you are kind of set in something that you're already building but some of you uh, have a lot of movement to go in different ways and I feel like maybe sometimes you get unsure because you can see so many different possible avenues, possible realities, possible futures that it's like well which way do I move, which way do I go maybe it can get overwhelming but yeah honestly that is your unique gift you guys is that you see untapped potential in other people um and something a side note kind of related but unrelated is that what I've actually realized throughout my incarnation throughout my life is that people sometimes can feel other people's potential in the way that like there's been times where I feel like I'm not really succeeding I'm not really doing anything but then to other people, they might be like, whoa, and all these nice things they have to say. And it's like, but we don't always see our potential and other people see our potential. So it's like, kind of like, um, I don't know. <laughs> I hope this is making sense. I just lost my train of thought, but it was all about, what was I saying? Seeing unpa uh, untapped potential. Yeah, so even when you feel like, yeah, that's not even my reality, because it's a possible reality to you, people are going to get like, whoa, because, you know, like, this is a possibility for you. It's not so far out of your reach as you may feel like it is. So, yeah, uh, I think that your one was a beautiful, beautiful quality. You have a lot of loving nature inside of you. As I said, it's actually very jeweled and balanced, but you have this way of kind of uh, laying things out for people, having really beautiful ideas, really beautiful suggestions, really beautiful business plans, even if you don't want to do them yourself. You're gifted at thinking in this way and this is creativity to be able to do this. So I hope you enjoyed your reading you guys. Hopefully that's explained okay and I got all the points across that I wanted to. But yeah, keep on doing what you're doing and acknowledge the fact that this is actually a unique gift of yours um and yeah i'm really interested to see specifically what happens for you guys in your future because there's just yeah there's no really limits for you guys um if you can imagine it it's already a reality out there that we just need to then shift and align into so you have a gift in this do not let that go unnoticed do not let your mind go unnoticed. Your gifts are inside of your mind. All right, I love you all so much and I'll speak to you soon. So pile number twos, if you pick this beautiful Amazonite crystal, then this is gonna be a reading of what is your unique gift and quality that goes unnoticed. Out of all of the piles, I think your one, uh, actually there was another one, but your one especially, you, this isn't something that till this point maybe you've seen as a gift or something that is maybe a good thing. <laughs> um, I feel like at times this unique quality of yours can uh, make you feel quite paralyzed or quite uh, tied or uh, frustrated or just like it's a bit of a headbanger. Um, and what it is is your indecisiveness. <laughs> Some of you picked this pile, you could have even like not even known which pile to pick or you were indecisive about which pile to pick, I don't know. It's just uh, this funny energy of indecisiveness. And I get that indecisiveness can sometimes be frustrating because with indecisive indecisiveness comes overthinking and comes thinking very deeply about things, thinking about each outcome, what lays behind each outcome, each choice, and what that would be like for you, is that something you want? This is why it's your unique gift and quality because you have the ability to lay out the choices in front of you and picture yourself in those realities. Picture what is under those realities. Would I be happy with this decision? Would I be happy with this choice? Yes, maybe it takes you more time to come to a decision, whether that's something little, like what you're gonna have for dinner, or whether it's something big, like do I wanna make this life decision? What path do I wanna go down? But at the same time, this actually in turn leads you to live a more fulfilling, happy life because in a way that even though this is all illusion anyway, some people who rush decision making, who rush their choices, end up looking back and making more regrets. Like, should I have picked the other one? And I feel like this is a fear of yours that you don't want to regret the decisions that you do make 
no matter how big or how small but you guys this is a gift because you are able in this way to articulate a different type of way of thinking this way of thinking is an evaluative or whatever the word is it's like a very much evaluation type of uh intellectual thinking you are separating things out you're separating choices out you're imagining you in each of them choices what is it going to look like after i make this choice you think about things deeply and this ultimately helps you to feel as if you're making the right decisions for you because even though if it does take time you've already lived all of the choices you've already lived all of the outcomes and so a lot of the time the choices you do make even if they do take longer you don't tend to regret them as much or maybe if it's something little you do like what ice cream flavor do i get and then you get one and you go home and you're like no i should have got the other one <laughs> but with important things this is different so yeah so this ability to lay out your situation in front of you the choices that are in front of you is a gift because some people get very overwhelmed by this seven of cups energy and it can be debilitating it can feel like you're out of control what do i do which way do i go rah, rah, rah. there's a lot of chaos that comes out of indecision and the thing is yeah you're able to lay out your situation into these paths now sometimes people can't do this and it creates a lot of fog, it creates a lot of confusion, mental stasis um, and you know that, that inability to make a decision creates a kind of stagnant energy of what do I do but some people aren't able to lay out the chaos in their life sometimes, some people aren't able to lay out the different paths that they even have. The fact you can acknowledge what choices you actually do have what they would look like what they would lead into this is a really special way of thinking uh, i feel like you think ahead you really think deeply about your decisions and yeah this is your unique gift uh, and quality um because as i said it in turn leads you to living a more fulfilled life in, in some aspects in the way that as i said you you um you align with decisions that are for your highest good because when you're thinking about these decisions you're thinking which one is going to make me the happiest which one is going to be the best for me which one has the best energy underneath it which one do i not feel like is aligned with me and when you do this you're making choices based from your intuition so you make choices based on your intuition and this is a gift that you're able to lay out these things and the thing is you may even you may not do this now, you may not realise, but because you do this, you're actually, if you tried, you could do this for other people. You can say like, well, look, you have this option that might make you feel like this, you have this option. And it's like, you can lay these things out. I feel like this is something that's very normal to you. Maybe you've always been an indecisive person. And so you don't see this as a unique gift or quality. And I think you didn't even see it as a unique gift anyway, because of the fact that it's not always seen as a good thing indecisiveness it's more of like a funny energy like it's a funny frustrating energy like oh my god i just you know can't make a decision ah. <laughs> but within this way you think very deeply about things and you take your time with decisions so you don't tend to rush into things and when we rush into things sometimes we can regret things so you follow your heart you follow your intuition and even though you may have seen this as a shadow aspect, it's actually a unique gift of yours, which I think is really quite funny. And um, yeah, I just love this pile because I'm quite indecisive myself, so I completely feel you. So within this energy too, you are thinking about things deep and it actually helps you to think if what you are doing now is aligning where you want to be. So you don't only make decisions for in the moment, you don't you know like you might make spontaneous decisions but i don't think feel like that's something you would do very often <laughs> unless you feel really strongly about it but a lot of the time you have this energy of thinking things through and it's uh, actually helps you to align the picture of where you are wanting to be with with where you are now so it's it's almost as if like with you being able to see out these paths see out these uh kind of choices and where they would lead you it's almost as if you pick them uh kind of like which one matches where i want to be the most which one matches what i want the most and it's like you find this energetic match of choice with what you deeply desire and want 
Um, so I think that this is really beautiful because it's actually something that gets your brain thinking in a really intellectual way, thinking in a really planned uh, out kind of way and like um, evaluating, you evaluate this. And this doesn't just stop there, this spreads onto other areas of your life because you evaluate these choices and the decisions you're making. Like you think about other situations deeper as well because when you're making a choice, sometimes it involves other people, how they're gonna react. And so you have this way of actually building your intuition through your indecisiveness, which is crazy. It's actually crazy. But yeah, you have this way of building your intuition through your indecisiveness because sometimes there's other people involved and you have to think about all aspects. Think about how they're going to react, think about how you're going to react, what do you want, What you know what I mean? So you think about the whole picture. Um, this comes from your intuition. The more you do this, the more you build your intuition. The more you do this, the more it spreads onto other areas of your life where you think about them in a more evaluative type of aspect and... Um, uh, you think about them things deeper as well it also helps your empathy towards others because when you do this and there is other people involved in situations it kind of like you have to put yourself in their shoes to find their reaction to relate that to what reality for you would look like so in this way like it's actually building your intuition in a way which is really cool so I'm gonna leave that there just as an overview your unique gift is your indecisiveness is your ability to think all of the options through to think out and and look and think how in the future this is what it is is future thinking not just here in the moment what do I want now but is this what I'm going to want in the future like you have this ability to do this and that is a gift yes it comes with overthinking yes it comes with sometimes feeling like I don't know which way to go but ultimately this grows your mental strength this grows your intuition this grows your sureness in yourself because once you suss out a few things a couple of times it's like you add that to your bank of thinking and choices and decision making and you'll take that for the next decision that you have to make so it also lays out all the different choices that you have in front of you but sometimes it can only feel like we have one or two but because you think about things deeper even if it's thoughts that are like oh my god imagine if this happens and it's like a bad thought that's still opening up more more possible realities for your choices to go down whereas sometimes we can get very stuck in the mind frame that there's only one choice there's only one thing to do so your mind actually allows you to see more options in front of you than maybe others could as well so i hope you enjoyed your reading my indecisive lovely souls you cracked me up um hopefully this resonates uh leave a comment down in the description be box below if it does and yeah, I'll speak to you all very soon. Hello, part threes. Welcome to your reading of what is your unique gift that goes unseen by you. Out of all the piles, this is the one that really took me back. Like this, this really made me like, whoa, I've never even thought about it in that way. And this is something I feel like you actually do see as a shadow aspect sometimes, or that can be a struggle okay <laughs> um so this is it's all to do with the fact that you feel things very deeply you think and feel things very deeply maybe more than a lot of other people would even if it's small things this is a blessing in disguise because even though it can get frustrating and it can get hard to have to think about things so deeply and feel things so deeply all the time when other people can just get on with things um you know because sometimes we can get ourselves in such a uh a spiral of thinking and feeling that that we end up feeling like we can't really we feel kind of stuck or we get ourselves into these kind of darker holes or these darker places of being where maybe like you know just from this one little thing you've thought about it and you feel it deeply from every angle and then it kind of meets you in this situation where you feel kind of low about everything around you or just like your situation feels very trapped or stuck but the thing is this is a blessing in disguise you guys do you know why because <laughs> oh i don't even know where to start because there's so many good things about it but yeah so i get that this could be seen as a shadow aspect i get that this could be seen as frustrating why do you feel things so deeply Maybe you've even questioned before, like, like, you know, am I, is there something wrong with me? Like, why do I, 
why do I think about things so obsessively or so deeply? Because I feel like sometimes it can become consuming with this King of Swords. It's like, if something you are feeling is getting to you, it, it consumes over your whole, your whole reality sometimes. Your whole mind will be focused in and tunneled in onto this thing, this aspect. But this is your gift because to gain energy into our vibration, to gain more light, to gain more um, higher frequency, we have to get that energy from somewhere. We can't just create energy, you know, energy can never be created nor destroyed, just transformed, just transmuted. So the thing is, is this is very interesting because by you, sometimes being how you would see as your own worst enemy and overthinking things, you make situations feel deeper right so you you may even like pine over things deeper or you you know feel this sense of loss deeper but the thing is this is your higher self creating an energy so if something happens it's very easily easy to turn it into negative to turn it into overthinking to turn it into these deeper darker emotions of energy but in this way it doesn't matter because you're actually growing that ball of energy from this situation that you've been given. So when you've been growing this ball of energy from the situation you've been given, this is when you're getting to the dark times. This is when you're getting to the points where you feel like it, it's all too much. You thought about too deeply, you feel too deeply, and then you get back up. The thing is with this, you guys, is that you're very, 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 very wise, intellectual and knowledgeable souls. You are able to see situations, people, and circumstances from a 360 point of view. This can be a gift and a curse, but by doing this, you're building up this energy. No matter if it's making you feel worse and worse, you're building up an energy. As I said, to gain energy, can't be it can't be created or destroyed. It has to be transmuted. So you create this big energy package of maybe shadow energy or darker energy. And what you do is eventually you get to this point where you get over it you get to this point where you say i don't want to feel like this anymore i've had enough and you get back up you get to this point where you start to see things from a different angle or you get to this point where you felt things from the worst and you decide actually you know what i felt it from the worst and if that's the worst then i've already lived it then so what it's almost this energy of like finally giving up finally letting go when you do this, when you finally give up, when you finally let go, you do not release this energy that you've built up as a negative. You transform that energy into a higher vibrational mass of energy. And what you do is you transform this energy and then you take it into your aura, into your vibration and you add it on. So this is really, really, really clever. I don't know if you've ever thought about it this way because I actually haven't until I watched this, like until I channeled this message for you guys I've never thought about it in this way because this is something I actually do as well I can get too caught up in things I think about things too deeply and it does create a spiral but when you decide to, and when it's the right time and when you decide to get back up and you finish feeling things you transmute all of this energy that you've been feeling into light and this raises your vibration this adds to your vibration it's something that doesn't disappear and i know a lot of the time we say we release things but actually it's not releasing that we're doing it's transforming we're transforming shadow aspects into light so not only does this raise your vibration this teaches you more this makes you stronger this makes you wiser because remember it's not how many times we fall down it's not how we fall down it's not how long we stay down that matters as long as you eventually get back up no matter what that looks like for you, no matter if you get back up quickly, no matter if you get back up and it's a struggle, it doesn't matter. You still get there. You still eventually make your way back around to how you were before, how you thought before. And so this teaches you lessons because, oh, this teaches you lessons because not only are you kind of having to work through these darker times, having to work through escaping the matrix that is the mind, which is hard, you are able to do this. And this not only inspires other people, but it also gives you the tools to teach other people on how to do this themselves. So you may be thinking sometimes, why is this happening to me? Why does everything go wrong for me? Why do I feel things deeply? 
or it's because you came here to be a teacher, it's because you came here to learn, it's because you came here to be wise, and you get given lessons that sometimes are obsolete for you, but you need to go through them so that, you know, one day you can share that wisdom with other people. We have the King of Swords here, you're wise, intellectual, intelligent people, especially when it comes to the mental realm, when it comes to mental health and you know, this is because you've had to get out of your own battles, your own mental darkness, your own hard times. So yeah, not only are you transmuting this energy into higher vibration that lifts up your whole vibration, uh, you know, eventually in this process of transmutation of this process of alchemy, but you actually help this to teach other people this too, because you may find that once you go through things, you may get friends in a similar situation or the same mindset as you and you're like, look, I've been there. Like you can give them advice that that is actually helpful for them because you've been there yourself. <clears throat> How I look at this as well is the fact that when we go through hard times and hard lessons in our life, uh, we have this funny way of deciding what is like traumatic and what's actually a big deal, which I think is funny because even little things can be traumatic. It's not the situation. It's not what the physical circumstances is only how it makes you feel and because you feel things very deeply everything is kind of like you're always going through these big transformations within your mind and, and so much growth and and learning so much more and learning so much wisdom um because someone could go through a traumatic experience it could even just be like a breakup or something and because they feel like this energy very deep this deep pain yeah, that's energy that's not nice, but that's an energy at the end of the day. Like, this deep pain, that's an energy package. That can be transmuted. And so what happens is, normally after these experiences in our lives, where they're, like, kind of darker or heavier or harder, we end up bouncing back stronger than before because we learn more, because we had to bring ourselves back up. You know, we, we have to lose strength to gain strength. We have to lose our empowerment sometimes to take our power back ourselves. And when you're someone that can take your power back yourself within your own mind, you're a powerful person. <laughs> you're a powerful being. So what I was trying to get at here is that sometimes people only go through this energy when something big is happening in their lives. When something big ends, something happens. And so this creates strength in them. But you go through this without needing the big events to happen. So you see you're continuously actually evolving and learning and growing and creating more strength. And I know it's a very bittersweet energy because to create empowerment, we first have to feel the opposite. We have to feel disempowerment. So although it can become very burdensome a lot of the time for you to feel things deeply, for you to get in these mental spirals, it's actually a gift in disguise. It can be a blessing and a curse, but it's, it's a hidden gift. It's a blessing in disguise. So you're transmuting this energy lighter to raise your vibration. You also learn more wisdom along the way. You can help teach others with that wisdom. It makes you a very wise old soul. It means that you've learned a lot of lessons. You've been through many deaths and many rebirths through your life. There's many different phases of you um, and how, you know, like one time you rise up and that is the new version of you. You'll fall back down. And then when you rise back up, there's a new version of you. So this helps you to gain perspective. This helps you to gain wisdom. This teaches you a lot and it's something that is, is specifically why you're very emotionally intelligent and very mentally intelligent is specifically because of this trait of yours to go into deeper spirals. You feel things deeper than other people and sometimes it's because you're your own worst enemy but that's a gift because if you didn't make this energy more heavy, if you didn't keep adding to this energy in a negative way, no matter if it's negative or positive, that's energy you're creating, that's an energy ball. So yeah, eventually you do always transmute this energy into light. Uh, you gain a new perspective from it. You're able to transform from it. You're able to gain wisdom from it. You're able to teach others from it. You're seen as a very wise old soul because of this. So yeah, it doesn't matter what you go through. It's the emotions that you actually feel that is relevant. And so when you're constantly having to pick yourself up, that creates more strength. So uh, hopefully that this made sense for you guys. I honestly was blown away by this. I, I'd never looked at it in this way that like, you know, kind of feeling things very deep and intensely and, you know, sometimes overthinking things, making it can be very consuming for us. I saw this as like, you know, sometimes as I, in myself, I see this as a shadow aspect, but now I'm realizing, you know, it's, it's a good realization point as well that we need the lower vibrations 
um, as well as the higher because how do we get the higher vibrations we get the higher vibrations only from transmuting the lower vibrations so in another point if you ever feel the lower side of vibrations just know that that's a package waiting and will be transformed one day into the opposite nature that you will feel all of the opposite if you feel shame about something well done because one day that means you're going to feel pride about that exact same thing or like that shame is an energy package waiting to be transformed and when it's transformed it's going to transform into pride because energy is a lot like food if you've got cookie dough it's going to make a cookie if you've got shame it's going to make pride if you've got cake mix it's going to make a cake if you have um kind of apathy or stagnancy that's going to make motivation, that's going to make movement. So it's very much this opposite of energy, what grows the next. So this has been your reading. I hope that this makes sense. Leave a comment down below if this resonates or if you can relate or if this is something that you have been struggling with that has happened through your life and that actually is a blessing in disguise. Even though, don't get me wrong, it doesn't mean that it's still easy to go through the negative side. It doesn't mean it's still easy to go through this because, you know, sometimes you just want to live your life and because you're feeling things deeper it's like you maybe you don't want to do stuff today maybe you don't feel productive today and it's kind of like we can be hard on ourselves sometimes because we're like I should just get on with things why can't I get on with things but you don't compare yourself to anybody else because you do think feel things deeper than uh, a lot of other people and you know when someone's not feeling things very deeply they can very easily just get on with things they can get on with their tasks but when you feel things deeply your mental state affects your physical reality your mental state affects your actions how you show up in your day so be gentle to yourself in these times where you feel really quite in the dark because you're going through lessons not only for yourself but for other people and spirit only gives you these lessons because you're so intelligent that they know that you'll always get back up you'll always learn the lessons and then that's one tick off in your book that is like I don't know I get this sense that you're like you're really wise if you wanted to be you could be a teacher of some kind you could be a therapist you could help people look at their situation from a higher view you can help people transmute their own emotions you can help people to stop feeling stuck in their own circumstance by shifting their perspective around to the opposite because you've experienced all these energies yourself you know say for tarot reading it's like I couldn't do all this tarot reading for all these different energies if I've never experienced the energy myself because if I've never felt the energy myself, how am I going to pick it up in the cards? Do you know what I mean? So so sometimes we do go through lessons for ourselves, but it's also for other reasons. You know, it's also for other people. So I love you all very much, my intelligent souls. I, I feel like yours was my favourite pile, I'm not even going to lie. They were all beautiful, but I just... You have a special place in my heart. I hope that this makes sense and I've done it justice explaining this to you. And yeah, I'll speak to you all very soon, my Earth Angels. Hello, pile number fours. Last but definitely not least, if you uh, picked this yellow slash orange aventurine, then this is going to be your reading of what is your unique gift, your unique quality that goes unseen or unnoticed by you. So your unique gift that goes unseen is all to do with your sense of justice and your generosity. You are all very kind, giving people, you're very generous. You give me this vibe that you you like to help people where you can, whether that's with your time, energy, your love, your actual money, your resources, your skills. It's like if you see someone struggling or, you know, they have an issue or they're trying to fix something, you like to help them bring justice to this in any way that you can. You like to be helpful um, because this gives you a sense of fulfillment and this gives you a sense of justice too. Um, even if it's not you who caused the issue, even if it's not you that was anything to do with why a situation is unfair or unbalanced or, you know, needs work, then it doesn't matter. You just have this sense that you kind of take over and you're like, you know what, I'm going to help you or you see it as like, you know, you bring injustice to these people. So you're the type of people that give me the energy that is like, it's with big and small things. So even if you were, say, with a friend or you're with a family member and they're, you're both eating ice cream and they drop theirs on the floor, you're the type of person to offer them your ice cream or you're the type of person to um, to either, at least give them half. <laughs> I think quick, that's what I put in my Instagram too because this is honestly, it cracked me up. But yeah, so your generosity is your gift in disguise. I feel like um, 
This is because you're very empathic, so it's almost as if you feel a sense of guilt or like you feel other people's emotions towards these situations that they're in. And so you just want to help them because you don't want them to feel that way or, you know, you felt like that before and you don't want them to feel that way. There's just a very helpful quality to you, whether you do help money, I mean, if, whether you do help people out with your money, your time or just anything like that, especially if they're close to you. But I feel like you do this with even people that you're not as close with, too. So yeah, there's this sense of generosity, this sense of bringing justice through your actions or through uh, giving energy to others or anything of that kind. It brings you a sense of fulfillment, a sense of happiness and joy. This is your unique gift and quality because you touch so many people's lives. You bring so much happiness into other people's lives, even though sometimes it can be draining for you because you don't expect anything in return. You're the type of people to do something for someone out of the kindness of your own heart um, and, you know, you don't ask for anything back. But the thing is with this is without you realising, these people aren't going to forget your kindness. These people aren't going to forget the little things or big things that you do for them. And you're always going to get this return back to you in the future, whether that's from a different person, from the universe, or from the same people just f it later on. Um, this is universe's way of saying thank you. This is universe's way of... Yeah, saying thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for living with compassion. Thank you for living with generosity. We need more people like you in the world. You could eat, also, there's a few of you on here. This may not resonate for all, but a few of you, um, I feel like you're just so giving, so caring, so kind, but you're not always the best with receiving. You know, you'll do something nice to someone and if they offer something back, you're like, no, 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 I don't want anything for it or... <laughs> I don't know, it just, it just, you're just very pure, you're very kind, but don't get it twisted, because I think you've, you know, had to face your own shadows, you've had to face your own hard times, um, and maybe someone helped you out for them, or maybe uh, you brought the justice to these, but I feel as if, like, if someone's ever done something kind for you, or, or the same as what you do for people, you feel this very deeply, and it's just, it's, it's something that, you know, really touches your heart and you're like, I want to be this type of person. I want to spread love. I want to spread kindness. I want to just help people out um, in whatever way I can, whatever way that is, whether it's small, big, little, you know, oh, I don't have this to do something. Well, I've got one laying around at home. Like, I'll go get it for you. Or you can have this of mine. And they're like, oh, do you want some money for it? And you're like, no, it's fine. Like, just take it. You get an inner sense of justice for helping people. Um, and kind of making things right again, even if it wasn't your wrongdoing in the first place at all. So this is really, really, really just something that I think is a, a beautiful quality that you don't notice because it's so natural to you. I think you don't notice it because you get so lost in the process of feelings when it happens. Like, you really do empathically feel other people's emotions and problems and you just want to be there to help them in any way that you can. So I like to say miracles uh, are spontaneous acts of kindness through people. Miracles come through people and you, my friends, are miracle creators, you're miracle workers because as I said, miracles are just spontaneous acts of kindness from strangers, from people that, you know, they don't need to but they just do. And so you're a miracle worker, you bring miracles into existence, you create pockets of heaven on earth, you create pockets of compassion kindness and what you don't realize is whenever you put this energy out there it's forever lasting it never goes away you might help someone and even if they don't help you back you've brightened their day and then whoever they then interact with after that they're gonna get that energy of brightness that you set them off with you know if you do something nice for someone they'll do something nice for someone else so you lead by example and you create miracles and i just would expect to get some of these back because universe really just is impressed, is proud, and is thankful for the work that you're doing. You feel like light workers to me. You really do just bring, I know I said it, but you bring a sense of justice. You balance things out for people. You you help people make feel uh, you help people feel better. You help people's situations to be better, whether that is tiny if it's the tiniest of things to the biggest of things. You know, and this energy as I said Energy cannot be created nor destroyed. You always just gift it to others. You're gifting energy to others and they keep that for a while and then they'll gift that to someone else. So carry on doing what you're doing, my earth angels. This is a really beautiful quality. As I said, I don't think you notice because it's something that's very kind of just normal to you or 
natural or you just feel it deeply so that's what you do but you have a very strong sense of justice and doing the right thing doing things fairly you know you would never deceive anybody uh or be hidden about things because you just want the best for everyone you're so compassionate so loving so kind so caring um but yeah sometimes i feel like you don't feel the same when it comes to taking back yourself so you're very light-hearted full of love souls i hope that this resonates and this is your unique gift of yours